Eschological truth is to encourage, and it was often given in times of exile, in times of trouble, that God hasn't forgotten his promise. God is going to keep his promise. God remembers, and, he, and to the faithful remnant, you know, the prophecies speak, and there's an end to this, and the end is glorious, and the end is going to be good as long as you remain, as you stand, as you're faithful, uh, as, you're, as you're, you're a believer. So this particular, this particular event uh, took place. In fact, on your very first sheet, Joel Rosenberg, uh, I have a, 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 a blurb from him. This is just a couple of days ago he said that this to me, and it's on your sheet there at the very top. Uh, notice there's July 14, 2011, uh, and here's what he says. I've been in Israel for the last 10 days speaking to various groups and conferences as well as meeting with some of our staff and key allies. I have to tell you, I've been struck anew by the miracles that, that this country really, really is. Uh, I've been here many times and I've written a great deal about this place. But it just never ceases to amaze me how the Lord is fulfilling Bible prophecy here. He really is building the ancient ruins. He is really creating the state of Israel. He really is bringing the Jews from all over the world back to their ancient home after centuries of exile, just like he said he would. And what does he quote here? He quotes Ezekiel 36, 23 to 24. All right? That we, we just looked at. Uh, and so, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'll lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up a standard, and the people, and they shall, shall bring my sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders, Isaiah 49, 22. So, so then we have this entire uh, speech here on your first sheet there, uh, and, and he talks about, Joel Rosenberg talks about how he, how he uh, first heard about the coverage you know, of this, and of course the quotes and the excerpts that are on your sheet I've taken from Joel Ro Rosenberg's site. Uh, but look what it, the first paragraph on your, the, on your excerpts there, what Netanyahu said, he said, the most important lesson of the Holocaust is that a murderous evil, the murderous evil must be stopped early when it is a still, still in its infancy and before it can carry out its designs. The enlightened nations of the world must learn this lesson. We, the Jewish, the Jewish nation, who lost a third of our people on Europe's blood-soaked soil, have learned that only, the only guarantee for defending our people is a strong state of Israel and the army of Israel. We, we have learned to warn the nations of the world of impending danger, but at the same time to prepare to defend ourselves. As the head of the Jewish state, I pledge to you today, we will never again permit evil to snuff out the life of our people and the life of our country. End of quote. That's a pretty powerful statement. It really is. You know, as you look at this, and uh, and, and the rest of it, you, you can read. Uh, well, if we drop down uh, after the part we read earlier, uh, to where it says, as Ezekiel prophesied there in the second paragraph, then he said unto me, these bones are the whole house of Israel, they say our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, we are doomed. Prophecy, therefore, prophesy therefore, and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and lift you up out of your graves, O my people, and bring you to the land of Israel. I stand here. This is Benjamin not yeah, I'm saying this. I stand here today on the ground where so many of my people perish, and I am not alone. The state of Israel and all the Jewish people stand with me. We bow our heads to honor your memory and lift our heads as we raise our flag, of, a flag of blue and white with a star of David in the center. And everyone sees and everyone hears and everyone knows that our hope is not lost. Now, it's interesting. Now, hope is not lost. Why? The word of God was fulfilled. God is working. And so here we have a prime minister of, of Israel saying that we, the people of Israel, recognize this prophecy has been fulfilled. And so then you come to, well, if Ezekiel 36 has been fulfilled, and like Joel said, why don't we expect Ezekiel 38 and 39 and 40 to be fulfilled? And here's the thing about Ezekiel 38 and 39. It's the battle of Gog and Magog. It's a battle when the nations of the world are gathered against Israel, and God supernaturally delivers them that's how he's going to manifest himself and reveal himself to the nations of the world. And they're going to know that the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob is God. They're going to know that and they're going to know that Israel, the, the nation of Israel, the people of Israel are his chosen people. 
and that the Bible is true, the prophecies are true, and you're in trouble if you're on the wrong side of that truth. Mm -hmm. It is true truth. Mm -hmm. And God's going to manifest Himself. And the exciting part about it, and what I'm going to do in the study, is to show you how the prophecies of Joel, the prophecies of Ezekiel, the prophecies found in Revelation, the prophecies found in Matthew, all say the same thing. Mm -hmm. The rapture of the church and the battle of Magog, I believe, are of the same event. The opening of the sixth seal, the darkening of the sun, the darkening of the moon, uh, the great earthquake, all those things, the coming of the day of the Lord, the rapture of the church, all this is going to deliver the church to heaven, but the world to the seven years of tribulation. We're going to see that. We're going to see that in the book of Joel, as well as we're going to compare those two. But, so here we are, we have this prophecy, right? But what happened in between there? You know, this is what happens so many times. We'll look at this prophecy and say, yeah, this was said so long ago, you know, 2,400 years ago, 2,500 years ago this was said. Uh, and here we are, and, and the prime minister says, it's been fulfilled. And, and we go, well, okay, but wait a minute. We, we gotta, like, it's like, stop the train here. What's happened in between there? To get us to this point is what's really exciting. And that's what I want us to do. I, want to, I don't want to just say, okay, here we are. I want to take the time in this study and today where I'm going to challenge you to begin to understand all the key events that took place from then until now. All right? And so we're going to take the time to look at that. And by the way, if you have some questions, uh, please, please uh, ask away. So here's what we're going to do. We have this prophecy that's taking place. We're going to look at a chain of events, a series of events here. The prophecy took place. Now, Israel will be regathered again, Ezekiel 36, 23 to uh, 28 there. Okay, there is a prophecy. We, we had just looked at that. Uh, now, on your, on your sheets, uh, what I want you to do is go to page number three. And, and here's what I want you to understand is that in Ezekiel 33, 34, uh, you're looking at that outline, it says, number one there, watchman Ezekiel reappointed. Okay, so God reappoints Ezekiel as a watchman. And I believe that God, for every generation, especially for, for, for the time of the end, has reappointed other watchmen. In fact, that's what I believe exactly what I am, and everyone who studies prophecy, we are watchmen. We are watchmen on the wall, watching for the things, just like Jesus said in Matthew 24, and we have to be faithful watchmen to warn those that don't see or don't hear the hoofbeats of the approaching apocalypse, the approaching judgment. And so what's interesting about Ezekiel, here's what you're going to see. You have the watchmen, the reappointing of the watchmen. You have the fulfillment of the dry bones. You have the battle of Gog and Magog. And guess what chapter 40 is about? It's the rebuilding of the temple. Third temple, which is what exactly has to take place at the beginning of the tribulation period. Isn't that interesting? So here's the point. The point of it is, is that, okay, uh, the watchmen, the preachers of prophecy, have been around since Blackstone. They've been around. We have been around. We have been warning. Ezekiel 36 has been pronounced fulfilled. Six million Jews were killed and the Holocaust. Do you know how many Jews were in Israel when he made that statement? Six million. Hmm. Is that just coincidence? On the 65th anniversary of Auschwitz. Right? So this would make it the 66th, this last, last January was the 66th anniversary. So the point of it is, is that what we're looking at the book of Ezekiel, we see a pattern. You know, the watchman, the fulfillment of, of the dry bones, done. All done, next, next on the schedule, on the prophetic schedule, the battle of Gog and Magog. And then after that, then the building of the temple, uh, which will be in the tribulation period, after the peace covenant is made. So that's the point I'm going to try to make with this. But look at all the detail. I want to show you some of the detail of the watchman. Uh, so we saw this in verse 23, that God, God will gather them from among the heathen, and we can sit here and say, done or happening, 
uh, Joel Rosenberg just yesterday sent me an email and said, it really is happening. God really is gathering his people. It is really there, right? And so it's like, folks, it's really happening. We really are living in the last days. We really are. It's like the church doesn't get it. People doesn't get it. The world doesn't get it. And he says, I'll, I will gather you, look at verse 24, I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. And so as we continue to look at this, so we see the prophecy. So, but, so what we see then with that prophecy, we, we can look back and say, well, Jesus the Messiah has come in fulfillment of the scriptures and he's rejected of his own. Uh, he, and in that in that teachings, the teachings he teaches that Jerusalem that the temple will be destroyed and Jerusalem will be will be thread underfoot uh, uh, a foot of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles is fulfilled. There you go, Norman. Mm -hmm. Right yeah. it, before we even started today, he asked me about this very this very event. I said, "Got it covered." <laughs> yeah, got it covered. So, so here, you know, Jesus comes. So Jesus comes to the temple. Jesus comes in fulfillment of the scripture. He comes and preaches to his own. And, and his own receive him not as a, as a nation. He's rejected. And so salvation has come unto the Gentiles. All of it prophesied by, by the word of God, the Old Testament prophets. All right. So this takes place. Now, mind you, just want to remind you, what are we looking at? We're looking at everything that's happened in between. All right. So, and we're starting with the ministry of Jesus Christ. So in Luke, look what he says in Luke 21, verse number 6. As for these things uh, which ye behold, the days will come in which, which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. That's Luke 21, uh, 6. And then in verse 24 he says, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and they shall be led away captive unto all nations, and Jerusalem shall be thread, uh, trodden, trodden down with the Gentiles till the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, so this is the destruction of 70 AD when Titus came in. He destroyed the temple. He destroyed uh, everything that was in there. And quite, quite honestly, you know, Titus, the general, didn't want to destroy the temple. He really didn't. He tried to preserve the temple, and, and he recognized it and how important it was to the Jews. But the antagonism between the Jewish nation, between the Jewish people and the people revolting and the soldiers was so great that at night something, an event took place and they started burning the temple down and Titus couldn't stop it. He couldn't stop it. The animosity, but the point was this, it was God's word. Right. Titus wasn't going to stop it. God's going to be fulfilled. But if you turn to Luke chapter 21 and verse number 24, the next verse is very significant. Because why? Because the next verse is, there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars will fall, right? So, so that verse then is, is, is a very significant because it talks about the coming of the day of the Lord. So what you see then, there's this gap in between verse 24 and 25. Verse 24 is when Israel is going to be, <laughs> going to be cast out and trodden down the temple. And it's been fulfilled for over 2,000 years. They have been trodden down the Gentiles. It isn't until 1948 they have come back. And they've come back into the land for the fulfillment of the rest of God's prophecy. And, and, so, and so all that's taking place. And one day, God's going to open up that sixth seal. And that sixth seal, the sun is going to be darkened. And the sun and the sun moon are going to be darkened. The stars are going to be fall from the heaven. There's going to be a great earthquake. I believe that is the rapture of the church. The end of the church age, where God is now going to be focusing in on the redemption of Israel and revealing himself to the world, and through Israel, reaching out to the rest of the world to then accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah in the seven years of tribulation. So that's why that verse is so significant. That follows right right in the pattern. So, so we're looking at over 2,000 years of history in this particular uh, section of scripture. Now, so, we see the prophecy, Israel is fulfilled, that Jesus comes as the Messiah, but what's next? Well, in 70 AD, like I said, the Roman general Titus fulfills the prophecy with the destruction of the temple, and in 139 AD, the, the final revolt uh, uh, brings about the destruction of the Jewish state, and Israel ceases to exist as a nation, and, 
and it remains to this day as a wandering nation. And so that's the status of Israel, was of Israel until 1948. Now, the church grows in the meantime, the church grows and spreads throughout the world, suffers much persecution. The Emperor, Emperor Nero persecutes the church, and John is exiled to the island of Patmos and receives the final revelation from God concerning this age, the church age. Right? 